Hi everybody, welcome to the Corona Spear Lounge. I'm your host, Bill Whittle, and uh, coming to you from the plane of infinite despair. Uh, before we get on with uh, the show today, the uh, topic is China, which you may have seen, uh, part one, but we'll be talking about this a lot. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to thank all the many, many people who, um, who wished my lovely wife, Natasha, a happy birthday, uh, and are doing so in the comments section here live now. Uh, her birthday's today, mine's tomorrow. Um, and it means an awful lot to all of us. Uh, thank you. Um, you know, for those of you who said, uh, geez, how did a guy like that ever manage to land a, a woman like that? All I have to say is, um, you know, just living with somebody that talented, that gorgeous, that um, sexy, wonderful, it's just got to be a real thrill for her, I would imagine. Anyway, um, uh, here we are. So, uh, Hopefully, I got most of this stuff in order. Once again, kind of playing uh, Beat the Clock again, but uh, thank you again for the kind birthday wishes. So here we go. I should probably tell you now that if you are if you suffer from high blood pressure, uh, this might be one of the times to probably just check out right here. I gave very seriously, you know, this whole Chronosphere Lounge thing is, is real different. Stratosphere Lounge, I just get up and talk about whatever I want to. And by and large, it's just opinions or whatever. Here... Um, I feel like there's a higher responsibility, a responsibility to try and get the data right, and I have other responsibilities as well as the world is going completely nuts. And I gave very serious thought about whether I wanted to include some of these clips or not, and then I decided that I would, uh, because I think they're, I think they're real. So, um, a congratulations, by the way, Ted Yantis. Uh, so, anyway, um... Let's uh, let's go ahead and, and take a look at a couple of things. What what it, it seems to me almost incredible that China could continue to make this situation worse, but they seem to make it worse on a daily basis. You know, uh, there's some some evidence increasing that perhaps this came from a, a Chinese lab and not the um, not the wet market in Wuhan. Yeah, I'm not I don't have a, a clear enough data on either one of those to form an opinion on it, but I'm going to say that the, the fact that um, that it got out, you know, uh, is, uh, like I said, uh, it's hard to know what you know until you know it, and, and I'm, I tend to be um, uh, as kind of forgiving as possible on these things. So fog of war and all the rest of this stuff, I'm certainly understand that these viruses can break out. And even though we know that these wet markets are the perfect virus um, breeding lab, even if it did not come from a Chinese lab, even if it just came from bat soup, even if everybody knows that bat soup is, is and all of these markets where wildlife, where the virus lives, um, when it's not found a human host, could not improve on the ability to move viruses from from uh, nature into the human population than you could in a like in a place in a, like a wet market in Wuhan. That is the absolute, uh, absolute maximum. So, the most the most credit I'm willing to give them is that because of cultural norms, this thing basically erupted, and that's where my forgiveness stops in terms of looking back at what's happened. Uh, China uh, lied for six weeks, six critical weeks. First, they covered it up. They knew that they had a human uh, transmittable uh, airborne influenza type coronavirus. They covered it up. They continued to cover it up. They continued to deny it. They continued to tell the World Health Organization that there was nothing to see here, move on, nothing to worry about. Whistleblowers, honest, brave Chinese citizens who, who have consciences and souls who tried to raise the alarm um, on this, uh, were suddenly forced to appear on Chinese television and make uh, sincere apologies and admit the errors of their statement. And then after that, um, some of them disappeared. One of them we know died. A woman who is in charge of the, um, of the lab, the, the, uh, the virus lab that's something like two, three hundred yards away from the Wuhan wet market, uh, who there's some compel compelling evidence that she was actually patient zero, uh, a number of Chinese scientists and scientists around the world are saying she's disappeared. We'd like to know where she is. The Chinese government assures us that she's fine. But if she is actually fine, you'd think they'd put her on television. I kind of think she's either died of the disease or she's just plain disappeared. There's a period there when, I don't know if it's still active, but something like 25 million Chinese cell phones just suddenly went offline in that particular area. I find that a little bit 
remarkable. I'm not saying 25 million people were killed, but I am saying 25 million people in an area um, near the outbreak are being quarantined electronically as far as the information virus is concerned. And, um, and that is suspicious. And from there, it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And finally, we're in a situation now where whether China likes it or not, or whatever anybody thinks of how we got here, the fact of the matter is China is, I think the best estimate I heard, something like 50 days, almost two months ahead of the rest of the world in terms of what this disease is doing and going to do. And, um, and for them to, to, to tell us that there are no new cases, uh, it, it's all just, it's inconceivable. Now, I've got some video here. Uh, and it, it gets, um, some of it is just going to make your blood boil. Like I said, uh, I, I gave serious thought to whether I want to pour uh, fuel onto this fire, and, and I decided that I did. And the reason I decided that I wanted to bring these videos up is because they appear to be true. So um, with the understanding that I had to kind of rush through this stuff here, um, getting it ready in time, uh, I've got a couple of videos for you. I'm pretty sure this first one was taken by... Um, by a member of the public in Australia, and uh, it shows uh, Chinese uh, people living in Australia. I wouldn't call these Chinese Australians. I would say these are Chinese nationals living in Australia, repeatedly returning to this uh, particular supermarket and going out with as much uh, supplies as they could possibly uh, carry with them, and then going back in and getting some more. I think it's about two and a half minutes, uh, and we'll come back to this as soon as it's over. Should be ashamed of yourself. Disgrace. Absolute disgrace. Well, of course. Light him up. Be ashamed of yourself. It's a disgrace. It's an absolute disgrace. That's an Australian citizen uh, responding to that. And um, and of course, that's just cultural differences. Who are we to say that one culture is better than another? Um, but this is not the only report of this. If this was the only report of this, I wouldn't have included this clip. But what what is coming from Australia uh, is really pretty remarkable. Let's see if I get this right. Sorry. Here you go. What we're finding, uh, what we found in Australia is that there is a Chinese company, gigantic real estate company known as the Greenland Group, which is basically telling all of their employees, or has been, was in the past, this article's uh, March, what's that, 31st? Yeah, 2020, so it's about a week old. Uh, Chinese company in Australia employed a lot of people, large real estate company, basically told their employees to go out and buy everything you possibly can uh, in terms of hand sanitizers and, and things of that nature. Just go out and buy it and, um, and take as much of it as you can. And you could see that video there where there apparently was some kind of limit on how much you could walk out of the store with. And so they would walk out of the store with a limit, stack it up outside, walk back in and buy more of it. Uh, I think this is uh, block quotes from the, uh, from the article here. Yeah. According to the Sydney Morning Herald, a whistleblower within the company came forward and revealed that real estate giant 
that the real estate giant has essentially drained Australia of its necessary anti-coronavirus equipment. Basically, all employees, the majority of whom are Chinese, were asked to source whatever medical supplies they could, one company insider told the Herald. This exercise went on for weeks through January and February, he said. The entire, entire accounts department, contract managers, the human resources team, and even receptionists were sent on a mission to find bulk supplies of surgical masks, thermometers, antibacterial wipes, hand sanitizers, gloves, and Panadol. There were numerous requests from the HR manager, human resources manager, and even our direct reporting line, which prioritized the assisting of the company in gathering these supplies over other work activities, said the source. In other words, don't just go out and get the supplies, but if you have to take time off of your real estate job that you're ostensibly in Australia to, to be working for, you forget about that and go out and get some more supplies. Um, yeah, so when questioned by the Herald, the Greenland Group, that's a Chinese company, issued a statement saying it felt compelled to assist in efforts to mitigate the spread of the virus, which had caused a shortage of crucial medical supplies in China. The article goes on to say, uh, to make sure I get the right article. No, nope, different article, sorry. So that's it for, um, for, for this particular article about what's happening in, uh, in China. I'm sorry, in Australia. And you saw the video of uh, Chinese citizens basically doing the bidding of their company by going into Australian um, uh, supply stores and not taking what they need and not taking what they need for themselves or even for the company, buying everything that was available, all of it. What the Chinese government is doing now is, is rather interesting. They are basically have taken as, as many of the supplies out of the world market as they could, taken them back to China, and now they're shipping out supplies to the rest of the world in these vast humanitarian gestures to show um, what? To show how, how uh, generous they are? It's not lost on me that a lot of the supplies that they're pulling off of the shelves from around the world and shipping back to China are of one quality, and that the and that the so-called humanitarian supplies that China is shipping out in return are of a somewhat different quality. For example, of a series of test kits that they sent out to, I think it was the Czech Republic, Italy, that kind of thing, fairly early on, about two, three weeks ago. You find out that something like 80% of these test kits were coming back with false results. The, the Czechs and the Italians just shipped them back. Same for a lot of the medical gear that's supposed to be um, protective medical gear, the stuff that China's giving out to show what swell guys they are and how well they're responding to the world pandemic, uh, turns out to be largely junk. Um, I'm going to come back to what's going on in China in a minute, um, but first I'm going to uh, deal with another article here. Again, sorry, I don't have these as quite as organized as I wanted to, but uh, let's see. Um, oh, yeah, this one. Oops, where's the headline? Nope. One more time. Okay, I don't have the uh, headline slide, but ba here it is. Sorry. Let's just do this real quick. Because it's, it's a great title. Um, and I'll just put this over here. Just read it to you. Um, it's, a, it's a tweet, but it's basically the headline in the New York Post is saying, the Trump, admission wa Trump administration weighs legal action over alleged Chinese hoarding. And what this commentator on Twitter says, and he's absolutely right, U.S. companies are finding out that they don't own their own factories in China. When they tried to export their medical equipment, the Chinese government stopped them. So what that means is pretty simply uh, this. Executives from three, I'm oh, sorry, wrong page. Let's go to the other one first. Leading U.S. manufacturers of medical safety gear told the White House that China prohibited them from exporting their products from the country as the coronavirus pandemic mounted, even as Beijing was trying to corner the world market in personal protective equipment, the Post has learned. In other words, China has having their citizens go out into the world, buy up everything they possibly could in terms of um, anti-coronavirus uh, you know, uh, uh, supplies. And in addition to buying out all of the supplies they could find on the shelves, They've also told American companies that manufacture these items in China to save money, like 3M. They've also told them, yes, you are an American company. Yes, you have made a bunch of masks. No, you cannot ship them back to the United States. They're going to have to stay here. Now the Trump administration is weighing legal action against China over its alleged actions, a lawyer for President Trump said Sunday. 
In criminal law, compare this to the levels of what we have for murder, said Jenna Ellis, a, leaguer, a senior legal advisor to Trump's re-election campaign. People are dying. When you have intentional, cold-blooded, premeditated action like you have with China, this will be considered first-degree murder. Ellis said the options under consideration include filing a complaint with the European Court of Human Rights or working through the United Nations. Yes, nothing like a strongly worded letter to get the attention of, uh, of uh, murdering communists. The article goes on to say that executives from 3M and Honeywell told U.S. officials that Chinese government in January began blocking exports of N95 respirators, booties, gloves, and other supplies produced by Ameri by their factories, meaning by American factories, American-owned factories in China. And that's according to a senior White House official, official. China paid the manufacturers their standard wholesale rates but prohibited the vital island items, what's wrong with me today, from being sold to anyone else, the official said. Around the time that China cracked down on PPE, that would be personal protective equipment exports, official data posted online shows that it imported 2.46 billion pieces. 46 billion individual pieces of epidemic prevention and control materials between January 24th and February 29th, the world the White House official said. So if you want to know why you can't find any masks or sanitizers or any of the rest of that stuff, this may be a pretty pretty good reason uh, for why. Uh, and then finally, Michael Wessel, a, founder of the mem a founding member of the Federal U.S.-China Economic and Security Review Commission, confirmed the situation and said the Chinese maneuvering had left American hospitals starved of PPE, personal protective equipment, to fight this crisis. So China has uh, a virus get out. China lies to the world that it's uh, communicable. China lies about um, its uh, uh, mortality rates. China lies about its infectious rates. China lies about having it under control. China, China walks, locks down an entire city of Wuhan. China spends probably anywhere from four to six weeks fully aware of the fact that they have a, a human to human um, transmittable disease and the number of visitors leaving China on a daily basis is, I want to say, about 8,000 a day coming to the United States and, and something like 20, 30,000 a day leaving the country every single day for four, five, six weeks with the Chinese government fully aware that this is out there and, and, with, um, and with the full understanding of the Chinese government over their constant assertions that, uh, no, everything's uh, under control and it's not communicable from humans to humans, nothing to worry about. This is what the Chinese government has done up until this point, but then things get a little more nutty and a little more, not a little more. Before we get off the hoarding inter interview issue of, of Chinese citizens hoarding equipment, I am warning you now, if you are the kind of person that really has anger issues, you, you really probably just want to tune this one out for the next two and a half minutes and skip ahead because I saw this two, three days ago and it took me that long to calm down enough to be able to simply download it. Um, this is a selfie video recorded by a Chinese woman living in America, apparently either with a green card or applying for one for permanent residence. She's um, assisted in what you're about to see by her American husband, American white husband, um, but she was just so tickled about what she was doing that she decided to make a, a selfie video about it. Uh, people have checked the accuracy of the translation she's speaking in. sounds like Mandarin to me. Um, and the posting that she posted this under is, um, I'm going out to buy all the masks and now Americans don't have any. Uh, this, is what, uh, this is what this woman um, put up and uh, we'll come back after it's over. Gay 另外一个地方找,然后就找到了。太开心了。还有呢,再去搬一下。在城市外面的人就是比较nice。Thank you, sir. 
出汗了，吓得。<笑>满满的一车，这回都扫光了，这回真没了。哎，就能看着我的汗，老热了，紧张兮兮的，像做贼似的感觉。哎，这边的人还不知道，现在是我在佛罗里达的中部开了一个半小时，然后，嗯，可能华人比较少，他们还不知道口罩的事儿呢。又一次成功结账，太、哎、心里太舒服了。又来一车，帮妈妈装呢。卡车装不下了，只能移过来。跟着忙活呢。Oh, you find it? Yeah. 装满。Yeah， 满满的一卡车，历史性的时刻。继续，还能有四十多分钟到营地。Now the date of that post was April first, and I thought, okay, maybe this is an April Fool's Day joke. And then I I thought it through, and I realized even if it's an April Fool's Day joke, how do you return that equipment?、Um, I mean, it's not a joke. It's not, it's not a joke.、Um, and so I have a, a brief message for for this woman who I'm undoubtedly watches the show,、uh, and this is a message for her and a message for all of the rest of the people in the China's Communist Party and and. And can we be crystal clear about this, please? This has nothing to do with Chinese Americans who are Americans. I'm talking about Chinese nationals in America who are following the orders or are ideological supporters of the Chinese Communist Party.、It、has nothing to do with Chinese Americans, many of whom are on the front lines trying to fight this thing, and who are absolutely as American as the rest of us. That has to be clearly understood from the beginning. And this woman is not one of those people. So. A little message for her, and 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 a little message for the Communist Party、uh, in China, just for what it's worth. You're suffering from the same disease that that、uh, the Japanese suffered from seventy, eighty years ago, and、uh, and the Germans as well, and any number of other people that have had to deal with the United States、uh, throughout its history. You you see how friendly we are. You see how open we are. You see how trusting we are. Naive is a good word. I think that's a fair word. Um, my wife is from Russia, and she certainly loves American people, loves their friendliness. Always wanted to live in a place that is so friendly, but every now and then, actually catches me and says, "Billy, you can't possibly believe that." I mean, it just and I, and I realize, no, I'm I'm just being too trusting, too idealistic. So, for people like that who we welcome into our country, and by the way, did you notice as she was walking out of what appeared to be、um, uh, look like a Home Depot? She's there stealing all the supplies. Her blog post over the top of this said, "I'm so happy I bought the mask. Now Americans don't have any." Did you see the、um, the the very nice guy、uh, from Home Depot coming? Oh, ma'am, excuse me. I'm sorry to bother you. Just walk right past. Oh no, no, it's okay. Thank you. Very nice. Okay. So here's my message for you. You think that because we're friendly and open and warm and and stuff and and naive, you think that we're stupid and weak. And there's a difference between naive. And stupid and weak, and you're about to find out what that difference is. That's what I believe. I believe you're about to find out what that difference is.、Uh, Japanese、uh, thought that we were stupid and weak, wouldn't fight, not made out of it, just a bunch of soft, fat, stupid Americans. That's exactly what they thought. That's why they launched the raid on Pearl Harbor. They did it because they were utterly convinced we had no fight in us. And as a comedian once said, which I thought was profound. He said, "You don't really want to make America all the way angry, because if America comes all the way angry, they're not going to come at you with ten thousand bombs. They're going to come at you with two bombs,、uh, and that's that's the last time this country was all the way angry. All the way angry. Nine、um, eleven took us right to our toes over the edge, but we managed to keep our temper after nine、um, eleven. So." I understand the advantages of a totalitarian government, and I understand the advantages of having armies of people around the world who will do your bidding, and、uh, risk going to jail or whatever. I also understand that there's no 
fundamental human connection in the way that Westerners understand it. I'm certainly happy to grant you that these are cultural differences that the government of China shares with the United States. Uh, and I'm willing to admit that they're cultural differences, but that doesn't mean that they're right. And it doesn't mean that I have to say they're equal. They're not. Um, if you insist on eating cats, wild dogs, bats, all of this stuff, if you insist of slaughtering them on top of each other, if you slaughter chickens on top of ferrets and then eat the ferrets, then you are a factory that creates deadly animal viruses from the animal host into the human population. And that means, from my point of view in terms of morality, I can't tell you what to do, but I can tell you I want nothing to do with you, and you are going to be a long, 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 long way away from uh, where I do business. And it's not just a question of business either, you miserable low-life communist bastards. If you honestly think that you could continue to build islands in the middle of the ocean, out in the South China Sea, just raise islands up from the bottom, um, and then... Uh, and then put a 12-mile exclusion zone around those instead of the three miles that most people uh, accept, civilized people, and think that you can basically just choke off the entire South China Sea, you're wrong. The previous president let you get away with that. This president won't let you get away with it. And this Navy won't let you get away with it. And I know that you've got a brand new aircraft carrier. And I know that you showed videos to your people about your brand new aircraft carrier. And I know they all wore uniforms just like American aircraft carriers. And they're spotlessly clean little uniforms. And I know you've got these fighters that go roaring off the deck. But they can't carry any weapons and still fly off the deck. And you don't trust your people. And you can't run an aircraft carrier if you don't trust your people. You can't run a free society like this if you don't trust your people. You can't live in the information age if you don't trust your people, which is why everything that China does is manufacture things from a second era, second wave industrial revolution. They can't handle the information age. It's beyond them. They have their own internet. There are stories that I've heard, uh, that, that I've heard from several different places where just little things like this, where Chinese players, computer games, will come onto American servers with the cheat codes. And the Chinese players will cheat to the degree that people will not have anything to do with them because when they play the game, they're invincible. They, every shot they fire hits and kills and nothing touches them. And they do this in order to force Americans off of those servers so that the Chinese don't have to interact with Americans. The People's Liberation Army of China has tens if not hundreds of thousands of people on duty 24 hours a day in chat rooms and all the rest determined to make sure that uh, we do things like lose video games to Chinese gamers. And that is my solid indication that these people have no chance of beating us, whatever. None, none, none. If you actually honestly think that this kind of thing can continue in this day and age, you got another thing coming. And I know you manufacture a lot of stuff, and I know you've managed to put a lot of people to sleep, but make a lot of money for a lot of people, too. I get all of that. But, um, but this president didn't buy it. The people that elected this president didn't buy it. And, and you will regret this virus. You're going to really, really regret this virus. Uh, and the reason you're going to regret this virus is I've, I saw an article the other day that says that China's about to take over the world militarily and that this is China's chance now to go and buy all of these depressed stocks. And I, I thought, is this, the person writing this article is delusional. Delusional. If China somehow thinks they're going to benefit from this economically, China makes our stuff. They don't make their own stuff. They make our stuff. I don't have anything in my house. I have many, many things that are manufactured in China, but I don't have a single thing in my house that is a product of Chinese culture or a product of Chinese invention, nothing. They make our stuff, and that's all they do. I don't play Chinese computer games. I don't listen to Chinese music. I don't watch Chinese movies. I don't listen to any of this stuff. I don't do any of this stuff. The internet is in English. It's on American-made computers, and they make our stuff a little cheaper than we do or somebody else does. And if they really think that this is going to, that this is somehow, that they can get away with this, they're out of their mind. 
So let, let me just tell uh, the, the, the lady speaking uh, Mandarin, uh, the Chinese national there who thinks this is also funny. Uh, you, you've got our attention now, and, and you're going to really, really regret that. You're, you don't really understand yet how much you're going to regret getting our attention with all of these lies, falsehoods, all of this underhanded, evil, murderous kind of thing. We have a virus. We know it's fatal. Quickly, let's buy everything in the world that the West would need to defend themselves from our virus, ship it back to China, and then we will hand it back when it's over or when we pretend it's over as a gesture of how generous we are and what a great system we have. I am... I have managed to calm down after watching that video, and um, and and I, I I find myself extremely calm. I've seen photos of your navy, and I've seen videos of your navy. I've watched your aircraft carriers carrier at work. I am one hundred percent convinced, without any question in my mind, to the degree that I know anything about military history, that the USS Enterprise aircraft carrier from World War II could take out your carrier We're using World War II aircraft. I have no doubt about it at all. None. None. Those guys knew what they were doing. Our guys know what we're doing today. If you think you can operate a, a floating city of 5,000 people and launch and recover jet aircraft that can fly hundreds if not thousands of miles and deliver strikes to within a foot or two of where, they're, of where they're aimed. If you actually think you can do this with this kind of attitude towards your people and, and, your, and this kind of attitude towards the world, no. You're about to learn some very tough lessons. And I suspect your first lessons in terms of uh, military will come from the U.S. Navy. And the U.S. Navy is on the scene first. And the Marines are on the scene first, too. And they're mean and they're tough. And when they're there, they're there mostly to make sure that the situation is in place. And then the Air Force and the Army come. But that's downstream, and I don't think that's going to happen. I really don't. What I think is going to happen is that American citizens are going to decide, as I have already decided, that this is not a question of, hey, it happened to break out here. You know, that's just the way it goes. No. Now, I will not buy a Chinese product ever unless it is something I desperately need. It cannot be bought anywhere else. And if I have to have a situation where I need a Chinese product that cannot be manufactured anywhere else until we bring this manufacturing back to the United States, then I will buy it used on eBay so you don't get paid for it twice. Um, your entire, entire economy, China, is based on making stuff for us. We invent it. You manufacture it a little bit cheaper than we can here. But because of the American invention that you steal, all the technology, you know, all the stuff that you steal, because you can't think of it on your own. All the stuff you steal, all the espionage, all of the military technology you steal, all of the information technology you steal, all, all the stuff you steal because you're not smart enough to think about it on your own. That stuff is coming home. It's going to be made at home. And it's going to be the future. You will never, ever, 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 as a culture, ever be able to produce two guys in a garage on private property spending their own money to manufacture a computer to change the world. It is inconceivable that these kind of things will come from China. Inconceivable. In the world of the information age, it's not a question of how many engineers you can put out there. It's not a question of how many millions of people you can get to work lockstep in your factories. In the information age, it's a question of how can you freely put together data information, imagination, ideas. Do it in a courageous and fearless way, free from worries about failure, free from worries about criticism, free from worries about any of this stuff. How can you combine things together in a new way that will change the world, multiply people's productivity by three orders of magnitude? Do you actually think that your subjects, because they're not citizens, do you actually think that your subjects are capable of doing this? No, it's not a question of intelligence. You certainly have very many intelligent people in China. But what you don't have is you don't have imagination, and you don't have the freedom to act on it. You don't have vision is what you don't have. You don't have any vision, and you never have as a society, ever. Always looking inward. Always looking inward. Always, always, always. Inward-based land army. Protect the farms at home. And the United States has always been outward-based, outward-looking, trading nations, control the seas. So, 
we are going to be moving a lot of manufacturing out of China. I think that when people really get done with this, the Made in China brand on anything is going to be poison for the American market. I really do believe that. And so while manufacturers will always go where it's least expensive, and I don't blame them for that, that's just common sense. But if it turned out that they could save 17 cents on a widget by making it in China, that's not going to do them much good, those American companies much good, if it turns out that made in China means that nobody buys the goddamn product in the first place. So consider that. Also consider that American engineers, American scientists, American technicians have developed ways to, re to retrieve oil from shale, tar, all the rest of it, that the United States has more energy underneath the actual territory owned by the United States, continental U.S. and Alaska. There's more energy available to us now than there has ever been at any time in history. There's more energy available to us now in terms of oil and hydrocarbons than there has been during the peak of the Arab oil run. It's not as easy to get to as that oil was, and it's more expensive, but it's there, and we can get to it, because we're smarter than you. We're smarter than you. And we're, and we're not just smarter, we're better too. And the reason we're, so I can say that we're better, which is a value judgment, is because we don't, to the degree that we had to poison people in order to run an industrial society, we learned our lessons about that. And we learned how to clean that up. And you would think that since everything you've accomplished happened after we did that, you would be able to understand how to do that. But that doesn't enter your mind because building clean industries is not important to you. We had air pollution and we had toxic rivers and we had all of the industrial era poisons because we didn't know any better. That's the only way we knew how to do it. It's the only way anybody knew how to do it. Once we figured out how to do it, without poisoning ourselves, our country, and our citizens, and the rest of the world, we stopped. Since you've stolen everything from us, you certainly could have stolen the technology, but you can save a little money by not doing that, and if it means the lives of millions, hundreds of millions of your people, you just don't care. It's obvious, you just don't care. So, in any event, the world is about to change, and, and I, I am very glad of it. Of all the, of all the things that this, that this crisis has shown us, the thing that's shown me the most in the last couple days are, number one, the U.S. media is not the U.S. media. I'm not saying it's in the pocket of China for money, although I think a lot of it is. It's certainly ideologically in the pocket of totalitarianism, and they're useless and they're finished. They're finished. The second thing I've learned about this crisis is that there are politicians who, who, who care about this country and politicians who don't. Politicians who care about the lives of saving their people and politicians who don't. And I've noticed that there are politicians from both parties that care about saving the lives of American citizens and doing it the right way and politicians from both parties who don't. I'm not saying it's a 50-50 split because it's not, but I've noticed that it does go both ways on both sides. And that's something that we're going to take out of this and something for us to deal with. But the final thing that I've realized about this uh, murder of 80,000, 100,000, 200,000 American citizens on the part of the Chinese government, because that's what it is. Letting it out is one thing. Lying about it is something else. Withholding information is something else. Buying the medical supplies from our companies that we need, our stores, our 7-Elevens, our CVS, going into those places and buying all the stuff we need to protect ourselves and shipping it back to China and then shipping it back to us in small doses as a humanitarian gesture. That's, that's murder. You, that is insider trading on human lives. And, and we won't soon forget that. But the thing, but the thing, the one thing that stands out in this, more than anything, far beyond anything else I've seen, is simply this. When you take American red tape out of the way, in other words, when you cut the, the ropes that we tie behind our, our hands, that we tie our hands behind our back with, when we take off the shackles on our own hands that we put there by ourselves, that we put on our own hands, when you take those things off, watch out. I mean, in the space of the last three weeks, I have seen more advantages in virology, in medicine. I've seen, I've seen manufacturing switch, just turn on a dime. 
I've seen the American people step up out of generosity. I've seen our friends around the world, countries like Israel, donating millions of tablets, other places donating millions of tablets. I know who our friends are and who our friends aren't, and so does the rest of the world. And everybody knows that China is the pariah nation. And in order to close this little rant, I'm going to show you a piece of video that was released actually quite a while ago. I want to say it was about three or four days ago. Um, as China began to realize that they had a choice to either save lives or save face, and that's it, that's all you need to know. They had a choice of saving lives or saving face. They decided to save face because that's how that structure, uh, society is structured. It's a, it's a society based on um, dominance and, and face and, 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 and relative levels of, of hierarchical, vertical authority. It's not a trust-based society. It's not an open society like ours. It's not based on a web of beliefs and, and, um, and, and a web of, of, of trust that exists between millions and millions of citizens. No, it's a strictly ordered top-down kind of thing. Don't give the guy above you any bad news. Don't let the guy below you take any good news for credit. Simple, really. Very primitive. But the thing I've learned is when you get the handcuffs off of the American machine, what it is capable of producing is astonishing. And when this economy goes back to work, and it will, and it'll go back pretty soon, what I genuinely believe is you are going to see an explosion of economic power coming out of the United States of America, an explosion of, of, of uh, imaginative therapies, imaginative new treatments, entirely new ways of looking at all of this stuff. We've got a company in California that hires a couple hundred people and a guy who came to America to make a better life for himself decided to figure out a way to make uh, transactions happen on the internet, so he did. So he made some money on the internet. And this one guy named Elon Musk decided, you know what, I'm gonna spend a little bit of my own personal money, just like Bert Rutan did and, and Paul Allen did. I'm gonna spend a little bit of the excess cash that I have from this capitalist system, and I'm going to go to Mars. We're gonna, we're going to do things this is SpaceX now, and 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 um, uh, Blue Horizons, or and, and and all the rest of it. We're going to do things as a private company, just a group of guys and, and women, just a bunch of us, going to get together, and 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 I'm going to write a check out of my own bank account, and we're going to do things that you miserable, no good for nothing, low life communist bastards have not been able to do in 70 years. You have not been able to do it. In 50 years, you've not been able to go where, where our great grandfathers went. You can't, you're just not smart enough. And you're not brave enough and you're not free enough. And so now, just over the hill here, not too far from me, there is a couple of buildings down there where they're making rockets that fly up and then they fly back down again. You with your entire nation and all of the money you've got and all of the cities you've built and all of these skyscrapers and all of this stuff that, no, Blue Origin, sorry, not Blue Horizons, all of this incredible stuff that you built to show the rest of the world how good you are. You can't do what a, what a, you can't do what a private U.S. citizen did on his own dime. On top of that, he made a bunch of electric cars. He's changing the world. A, mon a bunch of private American citizens are changing the world. They're all American citizens, by the way. Even what you think about Google and Facebook, which have plenty, plenty, plenty wrong with it. They're American companies. We're watching this on, on, on American servers, on American computers. We're speaking English. All of it. None of this belongs to you, China. And I think the last thing I'll say before I show you this last clip is simply this. Countries like China, and Russia used to be more about this, this still to some degree, and to some degree the rest of the world. They're completely, absolutely obsessed with America. And they're constantly telling the rest of the world, and telling us especially, how much better they are than America. And I got into a discussion with a guy in a Chinese chat room, and this was before 9-11, but after the incident where, they, where one of their pilots rammed one of our reconnaissance airplanes because they're incapable of flying with precision, apparently. But you certainly remember that incident where an American uh, P-3 reconnaissance airplane had to ditch on this Chinese island. And, and after that was over, I got into a number of chat rooms as early days of the internet, it was 2000, and I started talking with some people from China. And this guy was saying, I make as much money as Americans and I do this about this and this and this and we're doing this and we're building this. This is 20 years ago. Okay. And he said, in this, and we think America's this, and you're stupid, and this, and you're pop culture, and blah, 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 blah. And he gave me 
a half an hour of this kind of stuff. Talking about how stupid we are, how vulgar we are, how venal we are, how uneducated, all of it. And when he was finished, I said, well, you've spent well, quite a long time, a half an hour, 45 minutes, telling me what China thinks about America. Would you like to know what America thinks about China? He said, yes, I would. I said, we don't think about you at all. You never cross our minds, honestly. We don't listen to your music. We don't speak your language. We don't have t-shirts with Chinese characters on it. We don't... There's no Chinese dream. There's nothing, there's nothing there that we want. And, and we're having this conversation in English on American computers based on an American-based uh, internet. We don't think about you at all. It just doesn't enter our minds. Why would we? Go back to work making our stuff. And if you want to be this way about things, we'll make our stuff somewhere else. We'll either make it back here or we'll make it somewhere else. So uh, that's for you, red lipstick woman. That's for you. I know what you think, and I know how advanced you think you are, and I know, how, I know what you think about Americans, too. I see it all the time. That's fine. You're about to get your lesson, uh, and it's going to be an economic lesson. It won't be a military lesson, because if it's a military lesson, that lesson will last 72 hours. And that'll be the end of uh, the Chinese Navy. I should say the Chinese People's Liberation Army Navy, which is the official name of the Navy. They don't even talk to each other, by the way. The Army and the Navy in China don't even speak to each other. They don't know what each other's doing. We're afraid of these people. I've never been afraid of them. Never. I told my wife from the beginning when she got here, I said, I don't fear these Chinese people. I never have and I never will. They do not worry me in the least. If I had a board and I was playing Risk right now, I'd take America. That if I had the first pick, I'd take America. Absolutely. And anybody who thinks that China is the future doesn't know shit about the future, or China, or us, or anything else. Here's the last clip to show you just how culpable China is. After the breakout in Wuhan, China claimed that because of the Chinese system of totalitarianism, the number of cases went from hundreds and hundreds a day down to four or five to none. No new cases, really. No, nope. we stopped them all. Wow, I believe that's completely uh, unparalleled in history. I don't believe it's possible for a disease to work that way. Well, we did it. Here in China, we've got everything on the ball. We are smart and we're much smarter than you Americans. We know how to control the disease and we did. So we had 3,000 killed and then we put our system into work. And since then, not a single death. So uh, here's a video of, uh, I think it's from Chinese national television. Here's some video of Chinese doctors returning home after eliminating the COVID-19 threat in Wuhan in the space of a couple of days. Look how natural and unrehearsed it looks. Everybody's wearing their same outfits and everybody's got their printed signs and their little flags. Oh look, we've we just we just defeated COVID-19. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh no, you're welcome, thank you, no. Completely unscripted, absolutely unscripted piece of work. Oh, 13 healthcare workers died in China. Wow. I have no idea how they could possibly keep that number that low. No cases of COVID-19 in China for three consecutive days. This is a couple of weeks ago. Uh, 40 new infections, but they came from foreigners. Probably Americans bringing COVID-19 into China, I see. Sure, you can close the temporary hospitals. When you kill everybody, you don't have to worry about it too much. Wuhan provides hope for the rest of the world. Wuhan provides that hope for the rest the of the world. Thank you very much, World Health Organization. Turned around. 
Well, still need for caution. Yep. It's so mild you could overlook it. Yeah, it's such a nothing, this COVID-19, that, yeah, there may be people that don't even know they have it. Zero cases is a milestone. Zero cases. Zero. They went from being the hot spot in the world to zero cases in two or three days. Oh, but in Europe, it's much worse. And thank God China is sending the medical aid to the rest of the world. What would we do without them? Belgium, who obviously doesn't know how to control a virus the way the Chinese do, supplies to Italy, Austria, the Czech Republic, with an 80% failure rate, which makes them worse than useless. Today, Europe, we down. are the center of the coronavirus center of pandemic, the cor uh, coronavirus and we pandemic need protective equipment ourselves. It's in America we're now, of course, just up our production. We're converting new production lines, but this needs several weeks. And in the meantime, we are grateful for support. And in the meantime, we are grateful China. in our support for China. I don't know how many of you Italians there were holding up that banner. But if I was an Italian and I held up that banner saying, thank you, China, after what China had done to you, I don't know how I would ever face myself, my children, my wife, or anybody else again. If I was an Italian citizen who held up a sign thanking China for everything they've done for us, I do not know how I would ever get up out of bed again. But you never know. So I just, I am just astounded of all the things about China that I don't understand in terms of the cultural difference, here's the one I don't understand the most. The thing I cannot understand about China, no matter how hard I try, is very simple. I cannot understand how they expect us to believe something that crude and that primitive. We're the masters of messaging in America. The only people who really know how to sell communism are Americans. And, and for them to give us this picture of busloads of people with their flags and couples, blue shirt for the guys, pink shirt for the women, coming down the stairs with hand-printed little banners in China. We have saved Wuhan. You know, I've seen people celebrate. I've, I mean, humans, I mean real people. Uh, I've seen them celebrate. And when they celebrate, generally it's spontaneous. They don't usually stand at attention when they celebrate. And they don't usually have hand-printed banners. Usually they make their own banners or, or say their own things. In fact... Um, you know what? You're going to have to sit here and you're going to have to wait a second, uh, viewers of the Chronosphere Lounge, because there is one thing that I would like to share with you, have not seen already. It's going to take me a moment to download it, so bear with me, but it's worth it. Because we're talking about, um, about authenticity. We're talking about celebration. We're talking about what that looks like. And, and we're talking about how China really thinks um, that... Uh, that a bunch of people coming off and, and the banners and the police saluting, you know, oh, 13 healthcare workers died in China. Okay, sure they did. Sure they did. Um, I'll show you what, uh, I'll show you what celebration actually looks like. Um, let me see if I can find one that's, that's hard to tell. Yeah, this might be our best bet. I'm going to try this one. Um, sorry, it's worth the wait. Just give me a second. I'll tell you what actual celebration looks like. Folks, it's coming right up. Give me a couple seconds here. I'll get it downloaded and I will present it for you right away. Unlike Chinese uh, Communist Party celebration, which is heavily scripted and uh, heavily choreographed and designed for people who have no sense of what actual human life is like, apparently, uh, we do things a little differently here. And I wish I'd pulled this in advance, but I've got it. So give me a second. It's on its way. It's downloading now. And I will just put it in the window, and we will take a look at what actual celebration looks like, what people do when they are really celebrating, when they have something to celebrate, when they celebrate spontaneously, the way you would if you'd conquered something awful that had been brought to your world. Here it comes. Converted. Downloading now. Stand by. It's worth the wait. I haven't seen this particular clip yet, but I've seen a bunch of them uh, much like it. So um, I'm going to put this over here. Yep. And then I'm going to come back to our folks here. And finally, I am going to take this and I'm going to drag it into place. Uh, China, this is what celebration looks like uh, in the real world.
I can't quite tell. Is there no audio there? Hang on. That's annoying. Every day now, for about eight or nine days, and there are a bunch of them. I don't know how good that one was. I just grabbed one, but it's worth going to YouTube and looking for them. I showed it to Natasha. Made her cry. Made me cry a little bit, too. Every day now, for the last week or so, the citizens of New York City, who are paying the price for your incompetence, your negligence, your lies, your falsehoods, and your propaganda, go out every day at 7 o'clock in the evening, and when that bell turns 7, the entire city of New York goes out and applauds. And the people they're applauding for are not the mayor, it's not the president, it's not the party, it's nothing. They go out there and bang pots and cheer and scream as loud as they can. The entire city just comes alive. It gets louder every single day at 7 o'clock. People come out of New York City on the balconies and bang pots and yell and scream and applaud to thank the healthcare workers that are fighting and dying to prevent this disease from being worse than it is that you unleashed on the world. They thank the grocery uh, clerks who are putting food on the shelf at risk of their own lives because of what you've done, what you've lied about, the propaganda you've issued, this business of doctors coming home, COVID-19 is defeated, the communist system is great, we don't have any more new cases. All of this, all of this lies. If you had been honest, China, in the beginning, the best model show that we would be suffering 95% fewer cases, or in other words, 5% of what we're seeing now, if you'd been honest at the beginning. Honest at the beginning, but you weren't, so, so you're not. So we have New Yorkers now banging every day at 7 o'clock, not only to celebrate the people who are out there on the front lines working to, to, to stop this virus, but also to celebrate the people who died as a result of this Chinese virus that you've unleashed on the world and that you continue to unleash on the world and that you continue to lie about and that you continue to cover up. And if you think that things like trying to turn this into humanitarian relief on the part of a superior system to help out the poor Americans who just simply don't know how to do any better, you are in for a very, 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 very big surprise. A very big surprise. I'm not. The people watch this show aren't. And even, even how divided our political class is, this country's just doing it, just knocking it out of the park. They're out there every day. They're being aggressively nice to people. People are being as kind as they can be. I've never seen people out in public going behaving so well. I am feeling good. So... China. We'll talk more in the future. Um, but for now, um, you've got a lot of explaining to do. You've got a lot of damages that you are legally responsible for. And this decision to lie about what you had unleashed is going to be the end of your regime. It's going to be the end of it and it's going to collapse. It's going to collapse because of the Chinese people, most of whom have nothing to do with this. Nothing. Many of them don't know anything different. It's been mandarins all the way back. But Hong Kong protests are going to erupt. We're going to recognize Taiwan, which is what we should have done in the first place. Um, manufacturing is going to leave your country in huge numbers because people won't buy anything that's made in your country anymore. It's not an, econ argument, not an economic argument anymore. Now it's a, now it's a moral argument. Not going to buy anything that's made in China. Our factories are going to leave, other factories are going to leave, and you're going to be left making your own stuff, which isn't very good and certainly isn't very original. So, hope you're proud of yourself. Uh, laugh while you can. Uh, it's not going to get better for you. It's going to get a lot worse. And this country is going to pull through this next week or two, which is going to be horrendous, folks. And when it's done, uh, we'll once again show that the 21st century is the American century. 
the 22nd century is the American century, the 23rd century is the American century, and so on and so on and so on, until somebody comes along that's freer than we are, at which point I'd be willing to listen to the argument. We'll see you tomorrow right here on the Chronosphere Lounge.